In a remote area of the Tulsa Zoo in Mohawk Park, there are thousands upon thousands of honeybees at work in four hives. Seeing them at work illustrates the meaning of as busy as a bee. They work their entire lives and in the summertime, it's estimated that a, a worker female like this will live seven to eight weeks. She actually will work herself to death. Dr. Kay Backus is the zoo veterinarian who decided she could tend to her hobby as a beekeeper right here. I spend a lot of time at work, <laughs> a lot of time, and it was a convenient, very natural place to have them. Uh, the zoo is in Mohawk Park, which is a big natural wetland area. It's a really good place for beehives. Because there are so many unique flowers in and around the zoo, the honey is like none other. It should have a really nice floral fragrance. Mm. It should smell just like the flowers. Oh, it does. And that's what's nice about raw honey. Mm. That's good. Very good. Yeah. Really different mm -hmm. from what you would get in a store. Right. Mm. It's raw, it's it's local, it's very fresh. So and honey never spoils. That's a great thing about it. It may crystallize, but that doesn't that doesn't, doesn't spoil. Hurt it. Nope. They've even found honey in Egyptian tombs thousands of years old. It's yeah. crystallized, but it's still honey. Dr. K is finishing up this year's honey harvest from her bees. It's jarred with the Dr. K Zoo Bee label and sold in the zoo's gift shop. Proceeds from the sales go to Tulsa Zoo Management, Inc. Our demand for it is really more than the bees make. So it's, it's sold out as, soon as, as quick as I can get it bottled and get it to the gift shop. And also some of our staff buys it, you know, immediately. Angela Evans is a fan. She compares the honey to fine wine. Some wines, it depends on the grape that year, and that so much goes into it, the weather and, and all the different things that are in the soil. I think it's similar with the honey, is that it depends on the flowers, it depends on the uh, weather during that time, and all the different conditions to make it taste very unique. So each year, it's always interesting to see how the honey is going to taste. Back near the hives, Dr. K dons protective headgear before approaching the hives, and she also has me suit up to protect from bee stings. Let me show you what it does. It's going to Velcro here. And then these are going to come down. And once at the hives, Dr. K uses a smoker to also reduce the risk of a sting. What they think it does is um, elicit the smoke, elicits a natural instinct um, to think about evacuation. And when they evacuate, they fill their stomachs full of honey. It's like packing their suitcase. And when they do that, that keeps them calm. And it also makes it them less likely to sting. Okay, we're going to pull out a frame here. Don't panic. And you see all the bees on there, all the, they're all female. A couple of thousand bees are working in this tray alone. They have built the symmetrical honeycomb out of wax from their bodies. This is actually capped honey in nice fresh, fresh white comb. If I were to go ahead and cut this open, you can see that that's, that's nice liquid honey. She says the area she cut will be repaired by the bees in just about two hours. The hobby is a fascinating one and a labor of love for Dr. K. It was really the only sweetener that humans had until we learned how to refine sugar, you know, a couple hundred years ago. So, I mean, man has a sweet tooth and we've been keeping bees for thousands and thousands of years uh, or raiding natural bee nests. And, um, you know, I get stung and it, it hurts for a few seconds and it's, it, it's really not as bad as you think. For her, a small price to pay for the sweet product of nature. In Tulsa, I'm Liz Exon, the Oklahoma Very News smart. Report. Very smart animal. You know, it's, it's totally instinct driven. You know, we consider them smart, but um, you social insects,